Last year, REIT cash flows grew very significantly and hit new all-time highs. As a result, I think that many are going to hike their dividends this year. But which one are the best buying opportunities? Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to highlight five REITs that we are buying at the moment because we expect them to hike their dividends in 2023. But before I get into it, if you could please make me a huge favor and like this video will help me a lot. I just recently created this channel. Thank you very much. And so the first REIT I want to highlight to you is called Avalon Bay Communities. Its ticker symbol is AVB. This is an apartment REIT that owns mainly class A communities. It also has an A rated balance sheet. And so this is what you would typically describe as a blue chip company. It has grown its dividend for nearly 30 years in a row. And I think it's very likely to again hike its dividend in 2023 because its payout ratio is today low at around 60%. Its uh, rent keep growing at a good pace it has many development projects on the way and so it has a good path to future growth and the, one of its close peers called Camden Property Trust actually recently hiked its dividend by 6.4 percent uh, both of these companies are very similar the main difference is that Camden Property is mainly invested in Sunbelt markets whereas Avalon Bay is mainly in coastal markets but they are fairly similar they both grow mainly by developing new properties they mainly own class A communities they have a strong balance sheets very very strong track record and, and so I think it's very likely that Avalon Bay is going to follow Camden's uh, lead here and also hike its dividend by right around 5%. And so the main reason why I like this rate so much is because despite being a blue chip company, it's today priced at a roughly 20% discount to its net asset value. It pays a 3.5% dividend yield. And if you add to that a 5 to 7% growth rate, you get, you get a pretty clear path to double digit total returns because you add, let's say, 6% to the 3.5% dividend yield and then you add another roughly 5% per year in repricing from the discount closing down. And so you get to 12 to 15% total annual returns. And so the second REIT that I want to discuss is called Essential Properties Realty Trust. This is one of our largest positions. Its ticker symbol is EPRT. This is a triple net lease and we like it a lot because it's one of the fastest growing REITs in its property sector. I'll put a chart comparing its growth rate to some of its peers. It also has one of the strongest balance sheets. Uh, it has one of the lowest payout ratios at around 65%. And, and so I think it's very likely, almost certain to again hike its dividend in 2023. Historically, it's been growing its dividend at a good pace of 5 to 7% per year. It's probably going to be on the low side of this range in 2023 because it's taking more precaution now, it's being more cautious, it's acquiring less properties, but it's yielding 4.5%, you add to that a 5, 6% dividend growth rate. And so again, you get to roughly double digit total returns which with below average risk. And so that's why we like it so much. And so the third REIT is Vici Properties. Its ticker symbol is VICI. -I. It's the biggest casino REIT in the world. And so here you might think that, um, why would you invest in a casino REIT right as we potentially head into a risk session and, and th that's a good point but here it's important to remember that Vici is not the operator of these casinos it's it's their landlord and Vici is going to rent these properties on a long-term basis to its tenants with triple net leases. Its leases today have over 40 years left on them on average and its rents are hiked automatically each year by around 2% and so whether we go into a recession or not Vici is still gonna do just fine its cash flow is very consistent and predictable each year and and so this explains why Vici hiked its dividend by 11% even in 2020 uh, when the pandemic got going, which was, this was probably the worst possible crisis for the company. Uh, then in 2021, it again hiked its dividend by another 9%. And I think that's very likely to again hike its dividend in 2023 because today its payout ratio is quite low at around 65%. Uh, the company keeps growing steadily with the 2% rent hikes in its leases. And then it acquires more properties as well to supplement its growth. And, and so today you, you get a four and a half percent dividend yield on the company. I think it's set to grow its dividend by around five to seven percent in 2023. That already gets you to double digit total returns. And then on top of that, I think that the company is slightly undervalued as well. 
I recently had another separate video on this topic. I'll put a link somewhere on the screen, but it's priced at a slight discount to some of its peers like Realty Income, but I actually think that it has a stronger business model and that it should be the opposite. Vichy should be priced at a premium. And so if you have a four and a half percent dividend yield, five to seven percent growth, and then you have another, let's say five percent repricing uh, upside as its multiple expands, uh, you get very, very attractive uh, total return prospects with uh, relatively low risk in my opinion. Then the fourth REIT is called New Lake Capital Partners. Its ticker symbol is NLCP. And it's one of the few REITs that specializes in cannabis cultivation facilities that it rents on a triple net basis, just like Vichy Properties would do with, uh, with these casinos. This REIT went public uh, quite recently in 2021 and it has hiked its dividend every single quarter since then. Uh, today, the company still has no debt at all. And so I think that it's uh, growth prospects very, remain very compelling. Uh, now it can start taking on some debt on its balance sheet to buy properties at really high cap rates at, of around 12%. On top of that, its leases are, have annual rent escalations of around 2%. And so I think it has a clear path to high single digit growth and the payout ratio today is reasonable at around 80%. And so here again, you, you have a very likely path to dividend growth. Uh, I think they're gonna keep hiking it just like they did in the previous years in every quarter with small hikes of two to three percent probably and and yet the companies today priced the high dividend yield of 8.5 percent it's priced at just nine time ffo that's a much lower valuation than most of these other reads we've highlighted in this video so far but keep in mind that this is also a riskier sector obviously but i like the risk to reward here because you have a low valuation you have a rapid growth rate and the company's done really well so far the, the management is actually buying back stock at the moment and so the fifth and last read that I want to highlight in this video is called Stag Industrial. Its ticker symbol is ST. AG and I think it's likely to hike its dividend in 2023. Many of you will probably disagree with me because if you look at its uh, track record, it now hasn't hiked its dividend for many years. I think still uh, since 2015 or something, it hasn't hiked its dividend once. Uh, but I think that what many people in your here is that there is a good reason why it hasn't hiked its dividend. Uh, Stag has been deleveraging its balance sheet in the recent years. It has also been improving the quality of its portfolio. And so this is the Alluded to its FFO per share, but it increases the value of the company by rising its multiple. Uh, this is now mostly behind, yet the company is now growing at a rapid pace. Uh, it has a low dividend payout ratio of around uh, 65%. And so I think it's quite likely that its growth will now resume in 2023. And yet today it's still priced at uh, one of the lowest valuation multiples in the industrial sector at around 16 times FFO. It also has one of the highest dividend yields at around 4.5%. I think that as it now hikes its dividend by five to seven percent, the, the market is suddenly gonna start to perceive this rate differently. I think that so far it's been punished a bit for the lack of dividend growth, but as it now hikes it, I think that you, you're gonna see some upside. I think that the, as it uh, closes the discount, the gap to its peers, it could rise by around 20 to 30 percent from here. And so these are five reads that I'm buying today. If you want to learn more about what else my company is buying at the moment, feel free to sign up for the two week free trial of my read newsletter uh, you'll get immediate access to my entire portfolio and otherwise please like this video subscribe to the channel let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and see you at my next video